So what I'd like to discuss now is an overview of the uh, consciousness, the science of consciousness, specifically as it applies to uh, training in meditation and the phases of development for remote viewing and doing the coherent thought sequencing. So that you have a very clear understanding of it. Before we do the puja, what is that orange, orange, orange object? Look up. Oh, whoa. Oh my God. Whoa, whoa, just don't, don't, don't pop too up, much. Please crouch down and look because you'll block our cameras. Wow. Those behind me may move and stand up. Cause... Okay, that, you see that color? No, no. Oh, no. No, that's, that's so a ship. So let's thank them for coming. Wow, and it's above the sea Please level. Please turn off your night scope, Charles. Off. Someone's infrared or whatever. Yeah, that's Charles. Oh, oh whoa. Oh, here they come. There are two. Whoever's right in the front, if you can kind of just... Stay low, because your low. head is right. You can get on your knees in front yeah. of you. Look at this, how gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm looking with the night scopes. There's no smoke, there's no trails. These are not flares. And... Oh my okay, goodness. Okay, let's welcome them here. Oh, they're so they're, beautiful. They, they were waiting for us to arrive. Whoa. Jacques, please photograph. Yeah, All yeah. cameras should be filming. So connect to them in your consciousness and invite them here. These are the golden ones I talked about. See how gold? Yeah. Because the horizon is only 7 to 10 miles then on the conditions. So it's probably a couple miles. Everybody wow. see them? Yeah. yeah. They're so beautiful. Let's welcome their... Uh, beings on board to join us in meditation. That is such a beautiful color. So you'll never forget that color. Yeah, this is a major event. So we are grateful. So open your heart chakra and send them the beauty of humanity. And if you uh, can see what I'm doing, you connect with your palms out like this and your third eye and your heart making like a tetrahedron radiating our pureness and love towards them. They emerge from the sky, but they're very, very close to the ocean. They're just hovering. They're not... Um, whoever's just right in front of the yellow kind of blue jacket, your head's... No, no, yeah, you just kind of went to go down. Okay, you know what, I'm, I'm going to move. We should be filming. I am filming. But just trying to avoid. Those in front, if you can get on your knees or sit on the ground and look in front of your chairs, but stay low. Thank you. I'm just going to reposition. You need a higher tripod. No, I, I can bring it high. I just don't want to. Well, don't wait. We're going to lose it. Just yeah. stay. Yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. with it. There's not time for that. Okay, that's clear air, it just sort of vanished, the one on the right. They've stayed pretty much the same altitude, though. Wow. Let's invite them to come as close as they can. Safely. I need a time mark. Cam, time? 9.15. 9.15, so the mark time. 9.15. 9.15. Oh, that's gone into the ocean. See what it did? Okay, there is still an object there. Very faint, I can see with the night scope. Right here. Yeah, that's where... Uh, recording. Now, the way that you know that that's uh, not like something like a flare. First of all, there's no... It didn't shoot up and then come down and didn't drop from the first thing that has to be understood is the nature of awareness. So awareness is, as you're all listening to my voice, take a, just a moment to watch yourself listening. 
So as I'm speaking, just look at how it is that you're awake, listening, and hearing my voice. What is that? You're conscious. You're awake. Okay, now subtract my voice, what you're seeing with your eyes, your thoughts, your perception of your body, your perception of your ego, your individuality. There's still awareness there. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's very zen. <laughs> so you're awake, and it's really about becoming aware of awareness. Aircraft down there. Not far, because the horizon's only seven to ten miles depending on the conditions. So it's probably a couple miles. Everybody see them? Yeah. 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 Let's welcome their that is such a beautiful color. So you'll never forget that color. Yeah, this is a major event. So we are grateful. So open your heart chakra and send them the beauty of humanity. And if you uh, can see what I'm doing, you can connect with your palms out like this and your third eye and your heart making like a tetrahedron radiating our pureness and love towards them. They emerge from the sky, but they're very, very close to the ocean. They're just hovering. They're not... Um, Whoever is just right in front of the yellow kind of blue jacket, your head's... That no, no, yeah, you just kind of go down. Okay, hold on. You should be filming. I am filming. Those in front, if you can get on your knees or sit on the ground and look in front of your chairs, stay low. Thank you. Did they? It's okay. okay that thing. clear air, it just sort of vanished, the one on the right. He's coming. He's come, I got a feeling he's come moving in. Cool. They stayed pretty much the same altitude. So, it's pretty, pretty let's orange. invite them to come as close as they can. I need a time mark. Yeah, I'm trying to 9.15. 9.15, so the mark time. I'm losing it. Oh, that's gone into the ocean. See what it did? Uh, you serious? Okay, wow. there's still an object there. There. With the mind becoming, as it were, uh, pure and clear and empty of any distractions. And so then you're just there immersed in quiet mind without the perceptions of discrete objects of perception, whether it be thoughts, self, material, body, sounds, any of it. Now, all meditation techniques, if they are effective, are intended to allow the practitioner to experience the state of being awake within pure awareness without any perception of a relative discrete perception, meaning you're only aware of awareness and nothing else. My name is Don Bockelman. I was trained by the U.S. Army as a launch area technician, electronics technician. I worked on Nike Hercules um, batteries for two and a quarter years in Europe in the late 60s. Um, I was also trained as a systems analyst 
to analyze and to um, troubleshoot and fix any problems that would occur in the launch area. Also worked in IFC, which is integrated fire control, on that site for about seven months while I was on site. I uh, worked for Honeywell uh, here in Seattle for two years making nuclear tip torpedoes, smart torpedoes. They're uh, technicians and operators dealing with the uh, really high speed, very mobile targets because what they're looking at in the IFC are basically electronic representations of what um, the radar is tracking. So I heard a number of those from uh, young operators and older operators also, and they were positioned, they were stationed at different places around the world. Integrated fire control is where the radars uh, are were stationed uh, in, in relation to the missiles, and it's a, it's, it's a whole bunch of radars. There's a high par, there's low par target tracking and missile tracking, and they would they would recount stories where vehicles would come would come into the high par and they would track them and pass them off and they would be going say 700 miles an hour and accelerate to 3500 miles an hour in the atmosphere quite rapidly i mean just you know they just it was off the scale in terms of what the technology for our our or or potential targets russian targets were it was off the scale they are trained to determine the difference between radar strikes and any atmospheric uh, disturbances that can approximate targets. They're, they're, they're experts at it. So they, they, when they were tracking targets, they were tracking actual physical objects in the atmosphere. They, they were 100% convinced that there were physical targets that were in the atmosphere and were involved in a variety of different types of, of um, I travel. Uh, that was in the late 60s that I was hearing the reports. The, refer the reports um, went back into the 50s uh, because a lot of the older operators had been on, her on AJAX sites, Nike AJAX sites, and they were tracking them. And primarily the reports that I got were from the United States. They were in the United States. The military official position is um, completely opposite of what people who operate very sophisticated radar systems routinely perceive. If there was an, a large event, they would give you specific orders to not disclose to anybody ever. And one evening I was sitting in my living room and it was uh, in October of 1978 and I had all the lights off and I was just sitting there just letting my mind wander. and. Um, Quite abruptly, all of a sudden, four lights, four amber lights, started shining in the room and filling it di with diffuse amber light. Needs to say, I turned around quite rapidly to, to determine what it was that I was seeing. And there were three lights that were approximately equidistant from each other, and a fourth one off of the equidistant spacing a little bit, but in the same plane. Anyway, after I saw this object, this jet came from the west, due west, and I'm, I'm very well oriented, um, while I was standing on the back porch of my house and attacked and fired a missile, an air defense missile, uh, as it turned out it was a high explosive missile, right at the, at the target. And, and one of the things that I was doing outside of observing it is trying to ascertain approximately how far it was away from me. Well, as soon as the jet launched the missile, because my experience in air defense, and I know that we have air-to-air air air missiles that have nuclear warheads, I ducked behind my back porch so that I wouldn't get blasted with the alpha and beta particles because they blind you and they burn you horribly. And um, I ducked behind it, waited for a period of time. There was no nuclear explosion, so I went so I could view the object again. Uh, shrapnel was falling to the ground. Was it had exploded, and the object was accelerating away at a mind-boggling speed away from the, where the transaction occurred. This event occurred, the, the actual attack on the craft occurred about 10 miles east of Cedar Woolley. I'd say about three miles north of the area called Lyman Hamilton. 
on, uh, it's on the Skagit River in northwest Washington state. Outside of the speed, the thing that was most impressive about these targets is their capacity to have abrupt turns. We, we by we, uh, people who are in air defense, look at mass and, and turning radius. Well, we had nothing that was capable of matching their capacity for minuscule turning radiuses. I mean, we're talking about virtually no radius turns at high speeds, 2,000 miles an hour, right angle turn. Just pew. Uh, not only turns, but descents and, and, and ascents, where they would, they would descend rapidly. It didn't seem to make any difference to them where, uh, in which direction they went. Uh, at 11.14 in 98, uh, November 14th, 98, I was sitting in my front room again, only this time I was watching a movie. Uh, lights were off in my house. My estimates were it was approximately a mile across, uh, 1,100 feet thick, moving approximately 600 miles an hour without sound. I did, I did get a very, very clear view of, of its shape because that evening was a light frost. Um, it was clear, the moon was out, um, could see its shape very well. There were hundreds of lights on it. What shape was it? It was roughly triangular shape, a little bit of a truncated triangular shape because it, at, the, at the back side, um, it wasn't perfectly, it was, tri it was a, like a triangle, it's kind of cut off. And uh, the, I could see the sides of it. There were rows of lights going up the sides. There were rows of lights going around the perimeter. There were rows of lights going across the bottom. I called my, well, I called my kids that lived in Cedar Woolley in town after I saw a number of uh, silent jets come from the south in single file at four minute intervals and fly through the flight path. Uh, jets were so quiet you almost can't hear them on tapes. I'd never seen the model of jets, and I, I'm, I'm pretty good at identifying just particularly military jets. They normally, uh, when they're flying in our area, they fly from west to east on the Cultus Ridge, which, which is where they were supposed to, to fly. These flew from directly north to, from south to north. Uh, when they move through the flight path of the object, uh, they, after they move through it, they would take an immediate, really hard left and head westward. And then they went on a dog leg, and when they got over Cedar Willie and headed north. So I don't know where they were going. The second jet I filmed, uh, when he was flying through the, the flight path of the object, turned on a bright light. And I can only imagine what, what the purpose of it was, but four different jets came at four, four minute intervals. All in exact flight, same pattern. Same, same exact flight pattern.